Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here, going over 1.02, Phases of Matter, and ready to take notes. Now remember, I will show you the notes on the screen that I expect you to write down. So the first couple slides, we're just going to talk over a few things, and then we'll add things to our notes. Chemistry touches everything. The various fields of chemistry affect all aspects of our lives and society. In this lesson, you will learn about what chemists do, the various areas of chemistry, and how chemist activities influence society and our lives. And then we're going to go into the title slide, which is the phases of matter. So the study of chemistry, what it specifically is studying, the composition and structure of matter. So in other words, what everything is made up of and how it's put together. Chemistry studies interactions of matter. So how objects relate to each other and what happens when they are near to each other or react with each other. Because of chemistry, we create new processes, think of factories, and new products. Think about anything that's in your house that wasn't around 100 years ago, like indoor plumbing, your air conditioner, your nice sneakers, your computer, right? All that stuff, tons and tons of things, all because of chemistry. Obviously, it's other stuff too, but chemistry is the basis of pretty much everything. Chemistry has five specialty areas, and we're going to talk more in Unit 2 about the history of chemistry, but we're just going to kind of start out with things that are around us every day. There's five main branches of chemistry. So if you go into college and you want to be a chemist, well, you wouldn't just be a chemist, you would pick a branch of chemistry. For example, inorganic chemistry, which is compounds that do not contain carbon, which is an element, and we'll talk about that one later. Carbon you probably heard of in biology because living things are composed of carbon. And what do you breathe out every time you breathe? Carbon dioxide. But inorganic is everything that does not have carbon. Because if we were talking about the stuff that has carbon, we would call that organic chemistry. But inorganic, in means the opposite. Um, kind of like you have the word possible. It is possible to do that or it's impossible to do that. Impossible, not possible. Inorganic, not organic. So the prefix in or im means the opposite of. So inorganic, maybe you are studying steel like the steel that they use to manufacture cars. So items that do not contain carbon. We also have biochemistry, which studies compounds within living things. So how your body works, how your blood keeps the pH stable so that you can exercise and it doesn't kill you just from running down the block. Okay, your body has to do a lot to keep you alive to run down the block. Physical chemistry studies the physics of chemistry that has a lot to do with heat and analytical chemistry studies the physical and chemical properties of matter including its composition and structure analytical chemistry i like to think of as being really really picky so for example um, the chemists that make new medications they would be analytical chemists because they have to be very 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 precise and perfect in all their measurements and everything they do Often the activities of chemists involve more than one speciality, so they do relate together. But like I said, people usually specialize. So if you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm not going to be a chemist and I'm taking this class because the state of Minnesota is making me, chemistry has to do with everything around you. So if we look at our bowl of cereal here, we can talk about the fruit and how the plants had to go through changing sunlight into energy. What is that called? Photosynthesis. We can talk about the machines that they use to pulp the orange juice and the fact that the machines are running on gasoline and we have to ignite that gasoline. Chemistry. We can talk about the metal spoon and how we had to go through a physical change to change it from a hunk of metal in the earth to a nice shiny well-formed spoon. We can talk about plastic which didn't even exist a hundred years ago or so because of the combinations of carbon atoms that chemists were able to put together they created new things. So anything you can think of around you has to do with chemistry. Um, they also mentioned you could talk about artificial fibers in the tablecloth. A lot of your clothing now is man 
made. Talk about when you get your cereal. We've all seen the commercials where it says total 100% of vitamins and minerals, right? So they have to have certain amounts of vitamin and minerals so that it's healthy, so that it's enough that it matters, but not too much that it makes you sick. Um, milk. If you grew up on a farm and you've had milk directly from the farm, you know that when you set out a glass of milk, what rises to the top? The cream. The cream rises to the top because that's where the fat content is. But if you buy store-bought milk, it's been sterilized and pasteurized, homogenized. They mix it up so that it can't separate. So everything around you, including the air you breathe, has to do with chemistry. All right, so for our notes. So get out your notebook or your files, whatever you're gonna do. And this is my phases of matter. And what I put down here is chemistry is part of everything in the universe. Okay, and that was the main idea of the first three slides, that everything around you has to do with chemistry. How things are made, so let's add a few things. How things are made, how they react, all that type of stuff. What we eat and how our bodies function, etc. So, I mean, I could list literally millions of things, but that's at least a good start for our notes. Okay, so with chemistry, one of the things is where do you start when it has to do with everything? So where we're going to start with is the states of matter. So you can probably see part of the next word. Do you know what the states of matter are? Solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. So there are four states of matter. And we're going to talk about each one of these. Um, I would say leave a little bit of room in between these because we're going to be adding a little bit more. All right. Matter undergoes changes with the help of energy. Matter can be found in three basic forms or states. Solid, liquid, gas. Now I said there were four, right? The fourth one is plasma. And we're going to talk a little bit about this, but most of what composes the earth and what's around us are solid liquid gas. So obviously we're going to focus on those three in this class. Adding or subtracting energy from a system can cause a change from one state to another. So in other words, I can change from solid to liquid to gas to plasma by adding or taking away energy. Matter can undergo both chemical and physical changes. A chemical change produces a different type of matter, whereas a physical change does not. And that kind of gets into the next section. But we wanted to make sure we kept that in there to talk about we're not just talking about the fact that we have solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. We're also talking about how we can change from one to the other, as well as how different they are. Matter exists in three common states, solid, liquid, and gas. If you consider this iceberg on the ocean under a cloudy sky, you will see that matter exists in three states. Although the iceberg, the ocean, and the clouds are all made of water, they are somewhat different. Now, water is like the ultimate example for so many things in chemistry. One of the reasons is because of the way it behaves. Another reason is everyone is familiar with water. And there aren't a lot of materials on earth where you naturally have them as solid, liquid, and gas all together. So again, liquid, water, the stuff we drink. Water that is a solid is of course called ice. And water that is in the gas form is called water vapor. So we're going to pause down here and talk about steam. Many people in some textbooks refer to steam as the gas state of water, but steam is actually liquid water in the form of microscopic droplets. In other words, steam is liquid, it's just so tiny that basically it just goes through the air and floats around. The air contains a lot of water at all times, but it's in the form of water vapor. Water vapor is the correct term for the gas state of water. Don't worry, if you write steam, I'm not going to mark it wrong. Okay, as far as I'm concerned, you can say steam or water vapor, but I did want to point out that there actually is a difference. So, 
If you consider this iceberg on the ocean under a cloudy sky, you will see that matter exists in three states on Earth, very typically. Although the iceberg, the ocean, and the clouds are all made of water, they are somewhat different. The iceberg is rigid, has a definite shape, and occupies a definite amount of space or a fixed volume. It is a solid. Okay, let's break that down and talk about what that means. Obviously, rigid, we know that ice, we've all seen ice and probably fallen on ice, we know that it's hard, right? And so ice can have a definite shape. Sometimes the shape is random like this iceberg. And of course, if you make it in your freezer at home, you probably put it in an ice cube tray. And so you have the nice, neat ice cubes. But either way, once it is frozen water, it is ice and it has a fixed shape. It stays that shape until it melts. It also has a fixed volume. Volume, remember from our previous lesson, means what? How much? space an object takes up. So this iceberg always takes up the same amount of space. Obviously, if you melt it, you're changing, and then we can talk about how that's different. But as long as it stays solid, just like an ice cube, as long as it stays solid, it has the same shape, and it takes up the same amount of space, or in other words, has the same amount of volume or a fixed volume. So let's add that to our notes. So under our four states of matter, our first one is a solid, and a solid has a definite, meaning not changing shape, and a fixed or constant volume. Example, your pen has the same shape every day, and it takes up the same amount of space on your desk every day. So therefore, it's a good example of a solid. All matter is made up of atoms, molecules, little tiny things that we can't see. So this little demonstration is showing us that we have a solid, and in this case we have solid neon, and you can see each one of these are supposed to be an atom. And are they moving? Yeah. Now, how would you compare that movement to when you have a liquid compared to when you have a gas? When is it moving the fastest? Gas, liquid, solid. The fastest is definitely the gas. So which one was the slowest? The solid. In solids, the atoms are still moving. They're just moving really slowly. And besides the fact that they're moving slowly, how else would you describe the change in the atoms when you change phases or sorry, change states from solid to liquid to gas. Well, when are they going the fastest? Going the fastest as a gas and the slowest as a solid. And so let's add to our notes, molecules in solids move slowly and stay close together. But note, solids do not have to be cold. So when people think of solid, they're like, oh, it's frozen. Oh, like the iceberg, it's cold. Yeah, sometimes solids are cold, but can you think of a solid that feels hot? How about your car on a really hot summer day? Or the blacktop on a hot summer day? The blacktop and your car are both solids, but they're extremely hot. They can burn you, and they're still solids. So solid liquid gas isn't necessarily how it feels, but we have to look at the chemistry of it. So we say a solid has a definite, non-changing shape, and a fixed or constant volume, it takes up the same amount of space, the molecules move slowly and stay close together. All right, so we are gonna go through our other states now, and we're gonna go ahead and just list for each part, and we're gonna talk about these different varieties. Now, because of the program that I use to make these recordings is free, woohoo! It also means that it only goes up to 15 minutes, which means some lessons have more than one video that you need to watch. So obviously we have more we need to talk about, but that is going to be in the next video. So make sure you watch all the videos before you move on to the worksheet. And this one's finishing up. Go ahead and start the next video and just continue on from there.